After invading the Soviet Union on June 22, 1941, under Operation Barbarossa, the German army had started off with a bang and had continued to make great strides. When the German Ninth Army was about 400 miles from Moscow, they had reached the outskirts of the city of Vilekia Loce. The German offensive was taking a temporary operational pause. The Germans noticed a large Soviet army protruding into the German lines on the left flank of the German Ninth Army. The salient extended west as far as Vilekia Loce, which was held by the Russians. Luftwaffe reconnaissance verified a large Soviet buildup with the expected intention of cutting into the rear of Ninth Army. Facing this Soviet threat, the Germans had three options. They could absorb the blow and possibly counterattack. The Germans could directly attack the Soviet 22nd Army. The Germans could use a deep operation to neutralize and possibly cause the surrender of the Soviet Army group. Realizing the Soviet intention, the Germans decided to strike first. Their mission was to reduce the Soviet threat to their left flank. The operation began on August 22nd with an attack by three infantry divisions on the southern shoulder of the salient to force a penetration to make way for the two follow-on panzer divisions. Once this was established, with the 20th Panzer Division on the left and the 19th Panzer Division on the right, the German maneuvering elements moved rapidly through the penetration. The 19th Panzer Division had the burden of being the main effort and had a good road network to support its move, while the 20th Panzer guarded its left flank. The objective for the 19th was to cut the Soviet lines of communication and link up with the German 23rd Corps behind the Soviet Army, which was about 40 miles away. Because of the poor terrain allocated to it, 20th Panzer would not be able to keep pace with the 19th. This meant that the 19th Panzer Division would be mostly on its own for the operation. Nineteenth Panzer Division Commander General de Panzertruppen Otto von Knobelsdorf surveyed the battle plan and decided that security could only be maintained by speed and constant movement. He organized the division with an advanced guard consisting of a panzer regiment with an armored artillery unit and a collection of engineer and anti-tank detachments. The main body was organized into two task forces. The first consisted of an armored infantry regiment, two armored artillery battalions, an engineer battalion and various support units. The second was composed of an armored infantry regiment, an artillery battalion, a rocket launcher battalion, as well as other support units. The reconnaissance battalion had an anti-tank company attached to it. The reconnaissance task force was positioned forward with the breakthrough divisions, so when the penetration was sufficient, which happened around noon of the first day, 19th Panzer Division would be launched into the Soviet rear. As it did so, it was joined by Luftwaffe aircraft, which provided early warning and close air support for the advancing troops. By 1700 hours, 19th Panzer had reached Cunha, thereby cutting the rail line to Vilekia Loce. One task force from the main body was ordered to cover the left flank southwest of the division as it moved northward from Cunha to Tabere, while the reconnaissance battalion guarded the right flank. Moving very quickly, the lead elements of the division entered Tabare by 1800 hours and captured intact the railroad bridge and the road bridge over the Cunha River. However, these bridges were not sufficient to support the movement of large vehicles. The bridgehead was expanded west of the river and the division engineers were ordered to build a bridge for the division's heavy vehicles. This situation forced the halt of the advance for the day and the division went into a hasty defense in anticipation of Soviet counterattacks that night. 19th Division Commander planned to continue the attack as soon as the bridge was constructed and to link up with 23rd Corps at Vlachia Loce that day, thus completing the encirclement of the Soviet force. The division was not able to cross until about 1500 hours, making the link up that day impossible. After crossing the bridge, however, they encountered some resistance. They routed one formation, captured another, and destroyed elements of a third, to include some tank and anti-tank forces. During the day, aerial reconnaissance had spotted a large formation of Soviet troops moving toward the northwest. An hour after midnight, the Soviets launched a large-scale attack against 19th Panzer. Fighting was fierce and costly to both sides, but in the end the Soviets were repulsed. The Germans again moved towards Vilekia Loce the next day. 
the Soviets continued their efforts to break out, and this delayed the link-up between 19th Panzer and 23rd Corps. Finally, early on the 25th of August, after three and a half days of fighting, the German link-up was made. Following two more days of fighting, the salient was reduced. The Germans had destroyed or captured eight Soviet divisions, and with this, ending the threat to 9th Army's flank. This is a wonderful example of how a smaller force using good battlefield intelligence, combined arms, quick maneuvering, and boldness could surround a larger body of troops, neutralize them, and destroy them as a threat. If you liked the video you just watched, then you may like these two other videos from Immersus Tech. The love, the love, the love.